Flashman in the Great Game by George MacDonald Frazier. Book review. So this is the fifth book in the Flashman series. Uh, I'm coming to it after having read the original source material, Tom Brown's School Days, and then Flashman, Royal Flash, Flash for Freedom, Flashman at the Charge, and now this book. A, a word about the title here. The title, Flashman in the Great Game. Uh, the Great Game refers to the 19th century rivalry between Britain and Russia for influence in Afghanistan and India, played out by secret agents from both countries. Uh, it was first popular, popularized by the Rudyard Kipling novel Kim, which I've also reviewed on this channel. Uh, Explorer Richard Burton, I've reviewed a book about, uh, I've reviewed one of his biographies on this channel was among the participants in the Great Game. Uh, and as I've talked about before, it was one of my main reasons for picking up the Flashman series in the first place. Uh, it's a big theme in the original book Flashman and also uh, the book Flashman at the Charge. This particular time though, I think it's a little bit of a misnomer. I think, ironically enough, this title would have been more appropriate for some of the previous books in the Flashman series. For example, Flashman or Flashman at the Charge had more to do with the great game than this book. This book uh, is about the 1857 Indian Rebellion. So it's more about kind of open rebellion than any kind of secret covert thing, uh, which is, I, when I, you know, when I think of the great game, I think of the secret agents and rivalry. Although there is a little bit of it in this book, uh, there's a rivalry between Flashman and the Russian spy Ignatieff. Uh, Ignatieff is the surviving villain from the previous book, Flashman at the Charge, who is also in this book. But the bulk of this book is about the Indian Rebellion. Uh, and the book continues the theme uh, established in the previous books, where Flashman is kind of like Forrest Gump. Uh, he's present at all the important points in history, uh, in this case all the important points being all the important points in the Indian Rebellion. Even though he doesn't want to be, sorry, even though he doesn't want to be, somehow he always ends up being present at all the important events. So this book follows him jumping from one danger point to the next. And as usual, author George MacDonald Frazier shows a talent for unearthing the historical tidbits that are much more fascinating than fiction. For example, in this book, Fl Flashman and a few of his companions, after surviving the siege of Kampur, are led out under a truce agreement to the boats on the Ganges. However, when the rebels break the truce and start firing on the boats, there's a vicious battle and only one boat escapes. Downstream, this boat then becomes stuck in the mud and they have to go into the jungle in search of help but then they're attacked by the villagers in the jungle. The British, British soldiers barricade themselves in a temple and try to, try to hold off the villagers with rifle volleys. The villagers then set the temple on fire and they're forced to make a run for it. Miraculous, miraculously, they make it back to the river only to find that their boat is gone. But with the villagers in fast pursuit and the arrows flying, they have no choice but to just dive into the river and swim for it. They escape the villagers, but then they're attacked by crocodiles. And they only escape the crocodiles by heading for the rough water of the rapids. Uh, but then they're nearly drowned as they go through the rapids. Now, as I'm reading this, I think it's all pure fiction. It's all out of some mad Hollywood adventure story. But... These Flashman books all have end notes where you can go back to read the true history. And it's all backed up, backed up with the end notes. Uh, it really did happen. Uh, Flashman, of course, is a fictional character, so he himself wasn't really there. Uh, but everything else is backed up by the journals that were kept by the soldiers who were there at the time. 
And these kind of bizarre, forgotten, yet fascinating historical adventures are found throughout this book. There's another incident where Flashman is trapped in another of the key sieges, and he has to escort out a crazed Irishman. Uh, this Irishman has gone crazy from spending too much time in the tunnels, battling the Indian rebels in the tunnels. So Flashman, under the cover of the night, has to sneak him out of the city, past the besieging rebels, so that the Irishman can later act as a guide to the British army coming to relieve the siege. Again, it sounds crazy, but if you go to the end notes, it's all historical. I mean, again, Flashman is a fictional character, so his part in it is invented. Uh, but there really was an Irishman, T. Henry Cavanaugh, who really did exist and who really did sneak through enemy lines at night so he could guide in the incoming army. And as with his previous books, author George MacDonald Frazier also has an eye for fascinating historical figures that have largely been forgotten nowadays. There's Princess Lakshmi B. by the Marani of Jasni, apologies for the mispronunciation, who was regarded as something like the Joan of Arc of India at the time, and she plays a major role in the story. Uh, also, continuing on from the storylines established in the previous book, Flashman at the Charge, uh, Harry Scott East, who is a uh, Flashman's old schoolmate from the original source material, Tom Brown's School Days, uh, is again a major character in this story. And also, as always, there's a fair amount of comedy mixed in with these stories. Uh, Flashman continues his rivalry with Lord Cardigan, uh, who was the leader of the disastrous charge of the, of the Light Brigade, uh, as featured in the previous book, and who Flashman has grown to hate for personal reasons established over the course of several of these books now. Uh, there's a rumor going around at the time uh, that Lord Cardigan didn't actually charge with his troops. And when asked about it, Flashman tries his best to imply that the rumor is true without saying anything that would commit him outright. It's a particularly funny scene when you read it in the book. Also, after returning from India, Flashman discovers his reputation in England has been completely ruined by the publication of Tom Brown's School Days. So th this is a nice little intersection between the fictional Flashman and the real publication of Tom Brown's School Days. It's, it's a little bit uh, breaking down of the fourth wall, maybe, as they would say. Uh, and author George MacDonald Frazier does a nice job of imagining how the fictional character would react to reading about himself in the book. And of course, as in every Flashman book, uh, this book continues the theme of Flashman running from danger, crying and pleading for his life in front of all his enemies, and yet still somehow managing to be perceived by his countrymen as a quintessential Victorian hero. It's a, a clever little conceit these books have going. Uh, Going from a different angle now, talking about the history behind this book. Uh, the history is the 1857 Indian Rebellion. I am familiar with this. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm no expert, but I know something about it. Uh, I've learned about it from the PBS documentary series Empire Victoria, the, the BBC radio series called This Sceptered Isle, and again in more detail from the BBC uh, spin-off series, This Sceptered Isle Empire. Uh, I've talked about all of these before on this channel again. Um, as you can see, no books included in that. I guess all of my information is coming from documentaries and radio shows. Uh, but my impression, uh, again, just based on what I've read and listened to, I, well, I guess mainly listened to, is that the Indian Rebellion was an example of incredible barbarity on both sides. 
Uh, on the Indian side, British women and children were slaughtered by the Indian rebels. But on the British side, they took a very cruel revenge when their armies came in. All of this is in the book, and Fraser does not let, let the fact that he is writing a satire prevent him from fully taking on the horror of the events and trying to examine why they occurred. The satiric and comedy parts of this book are, for the most part, completely separate from the serious parts of the book. So there are some comedic scenes, but they're, they're separated from the more serious scenes of the novel. All of it is told through the eyes of Flashman, and Flashman, of course, is a thoroughly despicable human being, but even Flashman is appalled by the brutality of what he sees uh, going on in India at this time. Still, all that being said, at times this book struck me as a little bit of an uncomfortable mix of genres, uh, mixing in one of the, the great atrocities of history with what is at times a comedic and irrelevant take, uh, sorry, ir irreverent, irreverent take. Um, although, maybe it's a little bit late to complain about this because this has been true all throughout with all of these Flashman books. I mean, Flash for Freedom dealt with the horrors of the slave trade, so it's, it's always been part of this book. It's a strange thing, though. I wouldn't actually say it decreased my interest in this book. And in fact, I think the juxtaposition of genres, even though I felt uncomfortable with it on one level, on another level kind of made the book all the more intriguing, or kind of made it all the more interesting on some level. I, I, I don't know, the incongruity of it intrigued me. I'm not saying it's a good thing, I'm, I'm just saying it caught my interest. So I'd be cautious about recommending this book, uh, but I, I do have to admit it did pull me in. Um, at the time I was reading this book, I was uh, living in the University of Melbourne in an international student dormitory. So I was studying at the University of Melbourne, living at an international student, student dormitory, where there were a lot of students from India. So I would be in the common dining area reading this book and somebody from India would ask me about it and I would all of a sudden feel a bit uncomfortable about it. Uh, I'm not sure if I were from India, I would appreciate one of the worst moments in my history being made into this cheap novel. Um, and at one point somebody asked me if this book was an example of Orientalism. Uh, Orientalism meaning stories which use the East as an exotic background for Western characters to have adventures in. At the time I said, no, no, it's, it's a satire, it's, 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 making, it's making fun of Orientalist books, but it's not actually Orientalism itself. This book is a satire on Orientalism. But actually, after reflecting for a little bit, maybe, maybe this is an example of Orientalism. Maybe that's not a bad thing, though. Maybe, you know, our fascination with strange and exotic cultures, or what appears strange and exotic to us, uh, is, is, is a legitimate source of interest. I mean, uh, that, that's why people travel in the first place, right? It's because they want to experience something outside of their own culture. Um, I don't know. For now, I'll just say it was... A guilty pleasure that I enjoyed this book, but I'm not sure I'd want to defend it. And I'll just leave it hanging there. One small addendum to this. Uh, this is one of my scripted book reviews in which I read out a review I wrote years ago on the weblog. And somebody left an interesting comment on the original review I wrote on the weblog, so I'll read that as well. This is somebody who is apparently from Britain. And he says, I'm a massive Flashman fan. And this book is my favorite of the whole series. Part of that, as with most Flashman books, to be honest, is that the history side of it is not something I've ever heard about before. I had literally never heard of the mutiny before I read about it in this book. We never studied our colonial past at school. 
Yeah, that's an interesting uh, little insight there. If anyone else from Britain is watching this, I'd be curious about your experience in school. Did you hear about the Indian Mutiny when you were studying at school? Uh, he goes on to say, though, the only thing that made me uncomfortable was that I felt that atrocities on the British side were barely mentioned and only in passing, while those of the rebels were went into in great de in great and sordid detail. Sure, it makes sense for flashmen to make light of such things, but I still feel as an author, George MacDonald Fraser could have found an excuse to highlight some of the worst excesses of British retaliation. Still, it's a fantastic book, which does much to make Flashman a deeper, and dare I say it, slightly more sympathetic character. Now, my own memory of this book is that the British atrocities are in there. Um, so, I, I'm not sure it's fair to say they get glossed over completely, but I think he's right that the bulk of the book does focus on the Indian atrocities, uh, the atrocities committed by the Indian rebels. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it, it's, it's true they're given disproportionate emphasis in this book, but is that a bad thing or is it excusable because Flashman is a narrator after all? Or, is, you know, I don't know. I'll, I pass the question on to you. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think.